Just an hour from Phoenix, the town of Florence is one of Arizona's oldest settlements. Turns out, Florence, Arizona is a small town with some big history. Established in 1866, Florence is the final resting place of Charles D. Poston, the father of Arizona. There's so much cool history here. So we came out here and just fell in love with this town. How could you not? Time literally stands still on one Florence corner. The clock on the old courthouse has been stuck at 1144 ever since the building opened in 1891. That's because the hands never move. They're painted on. It was originally a purely economic decision, but now it's this uniquely Florence tradition and a quirky Arizona roadside must stop. If you're gonna spend a day in Florence, there's a lot to do here. We have two museums and we have cool history here. And it might not be the oldest history, but we have Old West history. And if you go to the museums, it reflects all that. Once a bustling center for copper trade and a stagecoach stop, today Florence's historic Main Street has well-preserved old adobe and other historic buildings throughout the downtown area. I do love doing landscapes and old architecture, things like that. So uh, historic downtown Florence lends a lot to that to inspire different things. Many of Florence's historic buildings are now home to mom and pop shops, locally owned eateries, artists, and other creatives. Florence is surrounded by wide open spaces that provide visitors with fantastic scenic views and opportunities to hike, explore, or off-road and take in the beauty of the Sonoran Desert. We love the people of Florence. I mean, it's just a great community. Started back in high school. They're looking for a yearbook photographer. And I thought, wow, what a better way to get out of class and document everything. I've been interested in photography since I was a teenager and never really had a whole lot of time to put into it. But uh, when I was older, the kids growing up and all that stuff out of the house, I um, wanted to get back into it because I had more time in my hands. For this husband and wife team, the photographs inside their gallery represent a rekindled passion. It just spoke to me. It was like, a, like I just learned a new language and I loved it. Janelle and Michael Baca rediscovered their love of photography long after high school. I had a friend that introduced me to Michael and so that's how I really got into it. He helped me to hone in my skills and develop some of the more technical aspects of the craft that I needed to expand on. So it's been fun. I'd go hiking a lot and I would take pictures of the landscape while I was hiking and I'd post them on social media and a local family asked me to do portraits of them. So I did that and I discovered in the process that I love working with people. The couple now owns Casa de Baca Studios on Main Street in Florence, and they don't have to look any further than their own backyard for inspiration. So living in historic Florence, um, it's so awesome to see all the different things just in the town, like the history goes back to the 1800s. So we have architecture, we have, like in our building, the exposed adobe, which is really cool. So it lends to the imagination and things like that when we're talking about photography. So we're always stopping somewhere because I see a pocket of light that's just cool or it's highlighting a mountain or it's just hitting the building just right. Just south of town are some of the most beautiful desert spots that you can see in Arizona. It's amazing. It's awesome to be able to just take a drive and see something new that maybe I missed the first 20 times that I drove there, you know. Their work and creativity go beyond the lens and even the paper their photos are printed on. Well, I'm not a traditional person that makes frames like, like if you go to a commercial place. We just basically design the frames to match the pictures and some of the 
Frames like the wood are distressed or made out of metal. They're not necessarily the metal frames, but they're like, think of it as a mat. And the corrugated metal gets put on and then we incorporate the picture with the metal. What's really cool? The metal comes from the historic buildings that have been refurbished here in Florence. I've taken a lot of uh, historic pictures or uh, pictures of historic Florence and, and com combined the two for a really cool vibe for some of the pictures that we make. When someone looks at my art, I want them to be able to feel that emotion that maybe I felt when I was looking at it or maybe trigger a memory that they have as they're looking at the, the picture. We just get a thrill almost every single time we sell a piece of art. Janelle and Michael want other local artists to experience that same thrill. We have 11 other artists in our gallery right now, and it's all really fantastic. So many different things. We have glass work. We have three different people that deal with wood, uh, charcuterie boards, wood turning, that kind of thing. We have three different jewelry artists. They're all very different. It's really awesome to see everybody's different creativity. Almost all of them incorporate some kind of aspect of Arizona. Florence has a really cool vibe. I feel like Florence is one of those places that has the next potential to be one of the greatest small towns in Arizona. If you have an addiction to sweets, anything with chocolate in it, <laughs> a block of deliciousness, that's, that's the way I like to put it. If I'm addicted to chocolate, that's what drew me in. Then the Florence Fudge Shop and Cafe is your local fudge dealer. My favorite is orange creamsicle because I think that's what it's called, orange cream or, or yeah, orange creamsicle. Because it does, it, it tastes like an orange creamsicle pop. They're all best sellers. Some days it could be the peanut, good old peanut butter chocolate to Snickers to butter pecan. I'm actually a maple walnut. I love the smell of maple walnut, it's so good. The Rocky Road, I have people request that one all the time. The chewy praline, just because it's the, the vanilla with the caramel on it. It's so good, and the pecans in there. You just can't go wrong with any of them, they're good. <laughs> Corey Eckenberger owns and runs the Florence Fudge Shop and Cafe on Main Street. The fudge is made with tons of love and a little bit of ornery. And she is as much a draw as her food. That crazy energy, that laugh. I think everybody should come down here just to meet Corey. We first met Corey a few seasons back when she was an employee. It was started by her church as an outreach program. Corey has since bought the place and expanded the menu with her fresh take on homemade soup, salads, and sandwiches. We're small but mighty. <laughs> the foot shop was originally the Florence Hotel and the largest in the region. It was built in 1876, nearly 40 years before Arizona became a state. Now is it haunted? Yes, and people have said that they've seen a little girl up in there. I haven't personally seen her, but we've had some strange things happen to us. My blender just went flying off the shelf, my glass blender. Um, I used to have this beautiful cake plate and I would display all my stuff on. Well, I walked in here one day and it was shattered everywhere. So I made a deal with Rose, the little girl. If I leave cookies out, she cannot come out during the day while I'm here, but she can eat all the cookies she wants at night. <laughs> she can't come out. <laughs> Getting creative seems to be Corey's specialty. I, I don't know where she comes up with this stuff, but she just has a heart for it. I get this crazy twitch in my eye, <laughs> and then Brie goes, oh no. <laughs> Every day she makes a specific menu that has something to do with Arizona, not necessarily in Pinell County, and puts her own special flair to it that you won't find anywhere else. Like the Butte Bagel. I did turkey, bacon, pepper jack cheese, fried onions, and I make this jalapeno sauce with avocados and then the jalapeno cheese bagel. The beef bagel's amazing. <laughs> you know, if I got rid of that sandwich, they'd probably kick me out of this town. Or the Olsen, named after a local kid. He uh, is playing baseball and he's doing very well, so I named that after him, just being proud of him and 
So we did roast beef. I made a horsey mayo. And we put pickles, Swiss cheese, and red onions on it, and bacon. Can't go out, gotta have bacon. But that one's becoming a very popular one too. And if you wanna get a table, you better get here early. It's always packed. Whenever you're in line, sometimes you'll be standing outside and you won't be able to find a spot to sit in here. So they're nonstop busy. And a lot of people in this community, we wanna stay local. So we make, the, we make that concerted effort to come down and eat local. I can't change the oil, but I can fill them up. <laughs> With love and town pride. This is our fudge shop, like our town's fudge shop. That's freaking cool. Historic downtown Florence is a mix of the old with some new. And these two shops on Main Street are a bit of both. We are in Paytonson Treasures and Sweet Peas Candy Store in downtown uh, historic Florence. Here, what's old is new again. So at Sweet Peas, we have candies, the vintage drinks, we have the nostalgic candies. Everybody comes in for the saltwater taffy and the 10 cent candies so the kids can come in for under a dollar and get you know, a whole bag of candy and leave happy. Meantime, you can hunt for a sweet deal in the thrift store. Paytonson Treasures is named after my granddaughter Peyton and we call her P, so of course then Sweet Peas is the candy store. And so at some point down the road, Peyton's going to be running these stores. I store the candy. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. And the baskets. Looks like Peyton already has the run of the place. Sweet Peas is the kind of store that will make everyone feel like a kid again. When people walk through the door, we get, wow, or oh, wow, this is really cool. Paula Butterworth and her daughter Danielle own and operate both stores. They move their families from California to Florence. When I walked down Florence, the town of Florence from the historic, there was nobody. It was during COVID in March of 2020. And I thought, this place is awesome. And there was nothing open. And I still just felt that it was gonna be a good place for us. They decided to buy this 130 plus year old empty building and open shop. We are on the historical register. The building was built in 1890. It survived a fire in 1917 served as a hideout during Prohibition, was turned into a Greyhound bus stop in the 1930s, and more recently, a grocery store, Gentry's Florence Market. The people who worked in the market come in and remember when their dad was a butcher, or their mom was a cashier, or they would go around looking for, you know, they had the candy or where they had the, you know, the produce, that type of stuff. An historic building with a new future. Come on in, we're open. A swaying and squeaky sign is something sort of expected on the side of a dusty desert highway. But look past the sign on Highway 79 in Florence and you'll see and hear the beauty of the Sonoran Desert and find the unexpected an oasis that is the Rancho Sonora Inn. The original inn was built in the early 1930s and was made up of the main house and four separate rooms. Three casitas were built in the late 40s and early 50s, but it had been left to ruin. The gorgeous cacti that lines the wall was all there when the inn's previous owners found it. They said they felt the inn was ready to blossom again and they were happy to take on that labor of love. The best way to describe Rancho Sonora Inn is rustic to refinement, starting with the original adobe buildings and adding the Spanish fountain in the courtyard, an eclectic mix of furnishings, fine beddings, and modern amenities. It's these special touches that have guests coming back again and again. Rancho Sonora is close enough to surrounding cities in Pinal and Maricopa counties, but when you stay here, it feels like you're a world away. It's a charming getaway where you can sit back, relax, unwind, and hopefully bring home some of that healing desert energy. First class 
but folksy, a real hidden gem, a desert treasure that can only be discovered off an Arizona highway. We're in Florence, Arizona, which is kind of halfway between Phoenix and Tucson. What am I drinking here tonight? We first visited Windmill Winery when they first started, before they even grew their own grapes. I, I was told by lots of the natives in the area, you'll never be successful growing wine grapes in this area. It gets too hot too quick. Back then, Harold Chris hosted wine tastings with California wines. I tried to grow probably six or eight different varietals, but what I was really good at was growing raisins. Well, it's always exciting when we can share success stories. So the only varietal that we can grow here on the property is the Barbera. It's an Italian grape that's very heat tolerant. Harold also has a joint venture with a winery in Wilcox. We have 15 different varietals of our own grapes that we grow there. We can't compete with the Bevmos and the Safeways, so our wines are different. We grow standard wines like a Cab and a Merlot and so forth, but we have different kinds of wines that you don't typically see in the stores. Harold ignored the naysayers and the unsolicited advice. Now, just look at this beautiful property where you can drink in the majestic mountain ranges and quiet lakeside views while drinking up Harold's wines in this nearly 100-year-old barn turned tasting room. A lot of people told me, why don't you tear this down and start over? But this building had so much character that we wanted to preserve what it was, and that's what people tonight are enjoying here. While this old barn hosts wine tastings, another plays host to 200 weddings a year. We bought a barn in Wisconsin, in Green Bay. First built in 1910, Harold had it taken down, brought to Arizona, and put back up again. The atmosphere, we hope that people will come here and enjoy what we've been able to create with the landscaping, with the wines, uh, the entertainment that we provide. And I, I, we're hoping that that's what really comes across to people. On three different nights a week, we do food trucks and live entertainment. We have a small kitchen here that we provide charcuteries, we provide pizzas, and a lot of homemade type things that we do here. My wife calls me a dreamer. And, and I, 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 I kind of like that because I do dream a lot. And this place I've dreamed about, this has been a vision. I, I like dreamer better than visionary. You know, some people say it's visionary. I think it's a dreamer, you know. And people put these dreams in your mind and your heart and I think this is the fulfillment of a dream that I've had, you know, to be able to do this and to have people come and enjoy because it's the people that we've met here tonight are different people who have been able to enjoy the dream. Florence may not be a bustling metropolis, but it is a town rich with Arizona history, charming local characters, and small Main Street businesses like the Florence Fudge Shop, where the locals have apparently become addicted to their homemade confections. A block of deliciousness, that's, that's the way I like to put it. My grandma used to make the best Rice Krispies, and she does it a little bit different. And I started doing Rice Krispies here. One time this lady came running in, she's like, it swings the door open, you got any of that crack? And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, and that's how the name Crispy Crack got, got hooked, and they love it. Crispy Crack is not the only thing satisfying Florence's sweet tooth. At Sweet Peas, old-fashioned candy is uniting Florence's generational divide. All those ones that when your parents were growing up and were telling you about, they're here. We have a take-and-go ice creams. Everybody comes in for the saltwater taffy and the 10-cent candies. American poet Ogden Nash wrote, Candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. If you ask me, Windmill Winery's Vino varietals are quite dandy and better suited to my adult palate. 
we can't compete with the Bevmos and the Safeway, so our wines are different. We grow standard wines like a Cab and a Merlot and so forth, but we have different kinds of wines that you don't typically see in the stores. If you're gonna spend a day in Florence, there's a lot to do here. We have bed and breakfast places, we have the winery, we have live music almost every weekend somewhere. Photographer Michael Baca's work is building a following and attracting more and more visitors to his Florence studio. We've had some people in Gilbert buy our art, and I delivered it to their house. They bought some other art that's hanging on their walls, and as I installed it, I looked around and I knew where the art came from and I knew how much it cost, and the guy turns to me and he says, just to let you know, your art is as good or better than anything we have in the house, and we would have paid those prices. So it was very flattering to hear that and inspiring at the same time. So that's what really got me thinking that, wow, we need to really be marketing ourselves as the hidden gem of Arizona. I get people that come here from all over the world. And I had a lady come and she said I was booming in Iowa. I'm like, what do you mean I'm booming? She flew here to see the foot shop and to check out the town. I'm like, how freaking cool is that?